Brought to you by wikivd.com. Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Caroline Dunst is an American actress. She made her film debut in Woody Allen's short film Oedipus Rex for the anthology film New York Stories. At the age of 12, Dunst gained widespread recognition as Claudia in Interview with a Vampire, a role for which she was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress. She appeared in Little Women the same year and in Jumanji the following year. After a recurring role in the third season of the NBC medical drama Er as Charlie Chamingo, and starring in films such as Wag the Dog Small Soldiers, the English dub of Kiki's Delivery Service and The Virgin Suicides, Dunst began making romantic comedies and comedy dramas starring in Drop Dead Gorgeous, Bring It On, Get Over It and Crazy, Beautiful. Dunst achieved fame for her portrayal of Mary Jane Watson in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. Since then, her films have included the romantic comedy Wimbledon, the science fiction romantic comedy drama Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, and Cameron Crowe's romantic tragic comedy Elizabeth Town. She played the title role in Sofia Coppola's biographical film Marie Antoinette, and starred in the comedy film How to Lose Friends. She won the Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival and the Saturn Award for Best Actress for her performance in Lars von Trier's Melancholia. She starred in the second season of the television series Fargo in 2015, playing the role of Peggy Bloomquist, a hairdresser who gets mixed up in a war between two crime families. Her performance garnered widespread critical acclaim leading to her winning the Critics' Choice Television Award for Best Actress and being nominated for the Golden Globe Award for Best Actress and the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Limited Series A Movie Losing to Lady Gaga and Sarah Paulson, respectively. In 2017 Dunst won her first Screen Actors Guild Award for her performance in the space drama Hidden Figures and co-starred in her third collaboration with Coppola the historical drama thriller The Beguiled. In 2001, Dunst made her singing debut in the film Get Over It in which she performed two songs. She also sang the jazz song After You've Gone for the end credits of the film The Cat's Meow. Early Life Dunst was born in Point Pleasant, New Jersey to Klaus Hermann Dunst and Inez Dunst. She has a younger brother Christian. Her father worked as a medical services executive, and her mother worked for Lufthansa as a flight attendant and was an artist and one-time gallery owner. Dunst's father is German originally from Hamburg, and Dunst's mother was born in New Jersey and is of Swedish descent until the age of 11. Dunst lived in Brick Township, New Jersey where she attended Rowney School. In 1993, her parents separated and she subsequently moved with her mother and brother to Los Angeles, where she attended Laurel Hall School in North Hollywood and Notre Dame High School. In 1995, her mother filed for divorce. After graduating from Notre Dame in 2000, Dunst continued the acting career that she had begun. As a teenager she found it difficult to deal with her rising fame and for a period she blamed her mother for pushing her into acting as a child. However, she later expressed that her mother always had the best intentions. When asked if she had any regrets about the way she spent her childhood, Dance said, Well, it's not a natural way to grow up but it's the way I grew up and I wouldn't change it. I have my stuff to work out. I don't think anybody can sit around and say, my life is more screwed up than yours, everybody has their issues. 1988-1993 Early Work Dunst began her career when she was three years old as a child fashion model in television commercials. She was signed with Ford Models and Elite Model Management at the age of six. 
She made her feature film debut in a minor role in Woody Allen's short film Oedipus Rex that was released as one-third of the anthology film New York Stories. Soon after she co-starred with Tom Hanks in the comedy-drama The Bonfire of the Vanities, based on Tom Wolfe's novel of the same name where she played the daughter of Hanks character. In 1993, Dunst guest starred on the science fiction drama Star Trek The Next Generation in Season 7, Episode 7 titled Dark Page as Hedrill. 1994-2001 Breakthrough and Critical Success The breakthrough role in Dunst's career came in 1994 in the horror-drama interview with the vampire opposite Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt based on Anne Rice's novel of the same name, where she played Claudia the child vampire who is a surrogate daughter to Cruise and Pitt's characters. The film received ambivalent reviews, but many film critics complimented Dunst's performance. Roger Ebert commented that Dunst's creation of the child vampire Claudia was one of the creepier aspects of the film and mentioned her ability to convey the impression of great age inside apparent youth. Todd McCarthy in Variety noted that Dance was just right for the family. The film featured a scene in which Dance shared her first on-screen kiss with Pitt, who is almost two decades older. In an interview with Interview magazine she revealed, while questioned about her kissing scene with Pitt, that kissing him had made her feel uncomfortable, I thought it was gross that Brad had cooties. I mean I was 10. Her performance earned her the MTV Movie Award for Best Breakthrough Performance, the Saturn Award for Best Young Actress and her first Golden Globe Award nomination. Later in 1994 Dunst co-starred in the drama film Little Women opposite Winona Ryder and Claire Danes. The film received favorable reviews. Critic Janet Maslin of the New York Times wrote that the film was the greatest adaptation of Louisa May Alcott's novel of the same name and remarked on Dunst's performance the perfect contrast. To take charge, Joe comes from Kirsten Dunst's scene stealing Amy, whose vanity and twinkling mischief make so much more sense coming from an 11-year-old vixen than they did from grown-up Joan Bennett in 1933. Mos Dunst, also scarily effective as the baby bloodsucker of Interview with a Vampire, is a little vamp with a big future. In 1995 Dunst co-starred in the fantasy adventure film Jumanji, loosely based on Chris Van Alsberg's 1981 book of the same name. The story is about a supernatural and ominous board game which makes animals and other jungle hazards appear upon each roll of the dice. She was a part of an ensemble cast that included Robin Williams, Bonnie Hunt and David Alan Greer. The movie grossed $262 million worldwide that year and again in 2002. She was named one of People magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People. From 1996 to 1997, Dunst had a recurring role in season 3 of the NBC medical drama Er. She played Charlie Chamingo, a child prostitute taken under the guidance of the Er pediatrician Dr. Doug Ross. In 1997, she voiced a young Anastasia in the animated musical film Anastasia. Also in 1997, Dunst co-starred in the black comedy film Wag the Dog opposite Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman. The following year she voiced the title character Kiki, a 13-year-old apprentice witch who leaves her home village to spend a year on her own. In the anime movie Kiki's Delivery Service, Dunst was offered the role of Angela in the 1999 drama film American Beauty but turned it down because she did not want to appear in the film's suggestive sexual scenes or kiss the film's star Kevin Spacey. She later explained, When I read it I was 15, and I don't think I was mature enough to understand the script's material. That same year, she co-starred in the comedy film Dick Opposite Michelle Williams. 
The film is a parody retelling the events of the Watergate scandal, which led to the resignation of U.S. President Richard Nixon. Dunst appeared in Savage Garden's music video, I Knew I Loved You, the first single from their second and final album Affirmation. When interviewed by MTV, Darren Hayes of Savage Garden stated that S.H.E. is wonderful. S.H.E. is really talented and a great person. Dunst co-starred opposite James Woods in Sofia Coppola's drama film The Virgin Suicides, based on Jeffrey Eugenides' novel of the same name. She played Lux Lisbon, one of the troubled teenage daughters of Ronald Lisbon. The film was screened as a special presentation at the 43rd San Francisco International Film Festival in 2000. The movie received generally favorable reviews, and San Francisco Chronicle critic Peter Stack noted in his review that Dunst beautifully balances innocence and wantonness. In 2000, Dunst starred in the comedy Bring It On as Torrance Shipman, the captain of a cheerleading squad. The film generated mostly positive reviews with many critics reserving praise for her performance. In his review A.O. Scott called her a terrific comic actress largely because of her great expressive range and the nimbleness with which she can shift from anxiety to aggression to genuine hurt. Charles Taylor of Salon noted that, among contemporary teenage actresses Dunst has become the sunniest imaginable parodist, even though he thought the film had failed to provide her with as good a role as she had either in Dick or in The Virgin Suicides. Jessica Winter, from The Village Voice, complimented Dunst, stating that her performance was as sprightly and knowingly daft as her turn in Dick and commenting that Dunst provides the only major element of Bring It On that plays as tweaking parody rather than slick strident body slam churlishness. Peter Stack of the San Francisco Chronicle, despite giving the film an unfavorable review, commended Dunst for her willingness to be as silly and cloyingly agreeable as it takes to get through a slapdash film. The following year, Dunst starred in the comedy film Get Over It. She later explained that one of the reasons for accepting the role was that it gave her the opportunity to sing. Also in 2001, she starred in the historical drama The Cat's Meow, directed by Peter Bogdanovich, as the American actress Marion Davies. Derek Ellie of Variety described the film as playful and sporty, saying that this was Dunt's best performance to date. Believable as both a spoiled and Jane Yu and a lover to two very different men, Dunst endows a potentially lightweight character with considerable depth and sympathy. For her work she won the Best Actress Silver Ombu Category Award at the 2002 Mar del Plata International Film Festival. 2002-2009, Spider-Man and Mainstream Success In 2002 Dunst co-starred opposite Tobey Maguire in the superhero film Spider-Man, the most financially successful film of her career to date. She played Mary Jane Watson, the best friend and love interest of Peter Parker. The film was directed by Sam Raimi. Owen Gleiberman of Entertainment Weekly remarked on Dunst's ability to lend even the smallest line a tickle of flirtatious music. In the Los Angeles Times Review, critic Kenneth Turun noted that Dunst and Maguire made a real connection on screen concluding that their relationship involved audiences to an extent rarely seen in films. Spider-Man was a commercial and critical success. The movie grossed $114 million during its opening weekend in North America and went on to earn $822 million worldwide. Following the success of Spider-Man, Dunst co-starred opposite Billy Bob Thornton Morgan Freeman and Holly Hunter in Ed Solomon's drama Levity. That same year, she co-starred opposite Julia Roberts' Maggie Gyllenhaal and Julia Stiles in the drama Mona Lisa Smile. The film generated mostly negative reviews, with Manola Dargis of the Los Angeles Times describing it as smug and reductive. 
She co-starred opposite Jim Carrey, Kate Winslet, and Tom Wilkinson in Michelle Gondry's science fiction romantic comedy drama Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind as Mary Svevo. The latter film received very positive reviews, with Entertainment Weekly describing Dance's subplot as nifty and clever. The movie grossed $72 million worldwide. The success of the first Spider-Man film led Dunst to reprise her role as Mary Jane Watson in 2004 in Spider-Man 2. The movie was well received by critics and a financial success setting a new opening weekend box office record for North America, with revenue of $783 million worldwide. It was the second highest grossing film in 2004. Also in 2004, Dunst co-starred opposite Paul Bettany in the romantic comedy Wimbledon, where she portrayed a rising tennis player in the Wimbledon Championships. While Bettany portrayed a fading former tennis star, the film received mixed reviews, but many critics enjoyed Dunst's performance. Claudia Puig of USA Today reported that the chemistry between Dunst and Bettany was potent, with Dunst doing a fine job as a sassy and self-assured player. In 2005, she co-starred opposite Orlando Bloom in Cameron Crowe's romantic tragicomedy Elizabeth Townas. Claire Colburn, a flight attendant. The film premiered at the 2005 Toronto International Film Festival. Dunst revealed that working with Crowe was enjoyable but more demanding than she had expected. The movie garnered mixed reviews with the Chicago Tribune rating it one out of four stars and describing Dunst's portrayal of a flight attendant as cloying. It was a box office disappointment. In 2006 Dunst collaborated with Sofia Coppola again, and starred as the title character in Coppola's historical drama Marie Antoinette. Based on Antonia Fraser's book Marie Antoinette, The Journey, the movie was screened at a special presentation at the 2006 Cannes Film Festival and was reviewed favorably. International revenues were $45 million out of $60 million overall. In 2007, Dunst reprised her role as Mary Jane Watson in Spider-Man 3. In contrast to the previous two films' positive reviews, Spider-Man 3 received mixed reviews from critics. Nonetheless, with a total worldwide gross of $891 million, it stands as the most commercially successful film in the series and Dunst's highest-grossing film. To the end of 2008, having initially signed on for three Spider-Man films, she revealed that she would do a fourth but only if Raimi and Maguire also returned. In January 2010 it was announced that the fourth film was cancelled, and that the Spider-Man film series would be restarted and therefore dropping Dunst, Maguire, and Raimi from the franchise. In 2008 Dunst co-starred opposite Simon Pegg in the comedy How to Lose Friends, by former Vanity Fair contributing editor Toby Young. 2010-present, independent films, television work and upcoming projects. Dunst made her screenwriting and directorial debut with a short film Bastard which premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival in 2010 and was later featured at the 2010 Cannes Film Festival. She co-starred opposite Ryan Gosling in the mystery drama All Good Things, based on a true story as the wife of Gosling's character, from a rundown neighborhood who goes missing. The film received reasonable reviews and earned $640,000 worldwide. Dunst co-starred with Brian Geraghty in Carlos Q. Aaron's short film The Second Bakery Attack based on Haruki Murakami's short story. In 2011 Dunst co-starred opposite Charlotte Gansbourg, Kiefer Sutherland, and Charlotte Rampling in Lars von Trier's drama film Melancholia as a Depressed Woman. At the end of the world, the film premiered at the 2011 Cannes Film Festival, and received positive reviews and Dunst were singled out for praise.
Stephen Loeb of Southampton Patch wrote this film has brought the best out of Von Trier, as well as his star. Dunst is so good in this film, playing a character unlike any other she has ever attempted, even if the film itself were not the incredible work of art that it is. Dunst's performance alone would be incentive enough to recommend it. Sukhdev Sand, who wrote, from Can in the Daily Telegraph that Dunst is exceptional, so utterly convincing in the lead role Trouble Serene, a fierce savant that it feels like a career breakthrough. Dunst won several awards for her performance including the Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival and the Best Actress Award from the U.S. National Society of Film Critics Dunst has signed to star in Sweet Relief as Marla Ruzica, a peace activist and U.S. relief worker killed by a suicide bomb in Baghdad. She has expressed interest in playing the role of blondie frontwoman Debbie Harry in Michelle Gondry's upcoming biographical film about the band. In 2012, Dunst co-starred in Juan Diego Solano's science fiction romantic drama Upside Down opposite Jim Sturgis. She co-starred opposite Isla Fisher Rebel Wilson and Lizzie Kaplan in Leslie Headland's romantic comedy Bachelorette produced by Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. In 2012 she co-starred opposite Sam Riley Kristen Stewart and Garrett Headland in the adventure drama On the Road as Camille Moriarty. Based on Jack Kerouac's novel of the same name, she made a cameo appearance in the short film Fight for Your Right Revisited. It premiered at the 2011 Sundance Film Festival. In 2015, Dunst co-starred as Peggy Blumquist in the second season of the critically acclaimed FX crime comedy drama Fargo for which she received a Golden Globe nomination. In 2016, Dunst co-starred in Jeff Nichols' science fiction drama Midnight Special with Michael Shannon and Joel Edgerton. In May 2016, she was a member of the main competition jury of the 2016 Cannes Film Festival. In 2017, Dunst starred with Colin Farrell, Nicole Kidman and Elle Fanning in the drama The Big Isle. Her third collaboration with Sofia Coppola who directed, wrote and produced. The film is a remake of Don Segal's original 1971 film about a wounded Union soldier who seeks shelter at an all-girls school deep in Confederate country. In May 2015, it was announced that Dance would star in the Rod Art label founder's feature directorial debut. Would shock about a woman who falls deeper into paranoia after taking a deadly drug. In October 2015, Dunst said that she is co-writing and set to direct a film adaptation of a novel. In July 2016, it was announced that Dunst would be making her feature film directorial debut with an adaptation of Sylvia Plath's novel The Bell Jar with Dakota Fanning in the lead role. Music. Dunst made her singing debut in the comedy film Get Over It, performing two songs written by Mark Scheiman. She recorded Henry Creamer and Turner Layton's jazz standard After You've Gone. That was used in the end credits of The Cat's Meow. In Spider Man 3, she sang two songs as Mary Jane Watson, one during a Broadway performance, and one as a singing waitress in a jazz club. Dunst revealed that she recorded the songs earlier, and later lip-synced to it when filming began. She appeared in the music videos for Savage Gardens, I Knew I Loved You Beastie Boys Make Some Noise in R.E.M.'s We All Go Back to Where We Belong and she sang two tracks which were This Old Machine and Summer Day. On Jason Schwartzman's 2007 solo album Night Timing, in 2007 Dunst stated that she had no plans to follow the steps of other actors who release albums saying, definitely not. No way. It worked when Barbara Streisand was doing it, but now it's a little cheesy I think. It works better when singers are in movies. Dunst starred as the magical princess Majoko in the Takashi Murakami 
an MCG directed short Akihabara Majoko Princess singing a cover of Turning Japanese. This was shown at the Pop Life exhibition in London's Tate Modern Museum from October 1, 2009 to January 17, 2010. It shows dance prancing around Akihabara, a crowded shopping district in Tokyo, Japan. Personal life and other work Dunst was treated for depression in early 2008 at the Cirque Lodge Treatment Center in Utah. She explained that she had been feeling low in the six months before her admission. In late March 2008 she checked out of the treatment center and began filming the mystery drama All Good Things. In May 2008 she went public with this information in order to dispel rumors of drug and alcohol abuse stating that now that I'm feeling stronger I was prepared to say something, depression is pretty serious and should not be gossiped about. Dunst dated actor Jake Gyllenhaal from 2002 to 2004. She dated Razel Light frontman Johnny Burrell in 2007. She dated her on the road co-star Garrett Headland from 2012 to 2016. In 2016, she began dating her Fargo co-star Jesse Plemons. By 2017 the couple had become engaged. Dunst gained German citizenship in 2011 and now holds dual citizenship of Germany and the United States. Dunst supported Democratic candidate John Kerry for the 2004 U.S presidential election. She supported Barack Obama for the 2008 presidential election directing and narrating a documentary Why Tuesday about the tradition of voting on Tuesdays and the low voter turnout in the U.S. as she felt it important to influence people in a positive way. Dunst works with the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation for which she helped design and promote a necklace whose sales proceeds went to the foundation. She worked in breast cancer awareness participating in the stand-up to Cancer Telethon in September 2008 to raise funds for cancer research. On December 5, 2009, she participated in the Telethon in Mexico to raise funds for cancer treatment and children's rehabilitation. Dunstone to home in Toluca Lake, Los Angeles, California, which she purchased in 2001. In 2010, she sold a residence in Nichols Canyon, Los Angeles. She also resided in a lower Manhattan apartment which she listed for sale in 2017. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?